Hello, this is Marco Volk from www.houseinvestigations.com. It is estimated that over 35 million homes in the USA have potential asbestos containing vermiculite insulation hiding in their walls, ceilings, and attics. Vermiculite is lightweight, low density, and has great thermal conductivity. Due to these great qualities, vermiculite was used in potting soil. It was used at the bottom of gas fireplace log sets. It was used commercially, and most commonly, this insulation was used in our walls, floors, and attics. In Libby, Montana, a company called WC Grace acquired a company called Zonalite, which stripped mining earth for vermiculite ore from 1963 to 1990. While in operation, the Libby mine may have produced 80% of the world's supply of vermiculite. Unfortunately, along with the vermiculite ore, the mine also harvested tremolite, the worst type and smallest type of asbestos. When comparing its size to larger asbestos fiber types, it is like comparing the entire Empire State Building to only one floor of the Empire State Building. Only one of these small fibers can cause lung damage. This tremolite asbestos was mixed in with the vermiculite product. It is now estimated that over 30% of the entire city population of Libby, Montana have lung problems, mesothemioma, a form of cancer caused by the exposure to asbestos, and many of the town's people have already died. As far as the miners and employees at the manufacturing processing plants, the percentage is much higher. In 2002, Libby was declared a National Superfund site, and the EPA called this the worst case of industrial poisoning in American history. Not only was the city of Libby, Montana contaminated, but also so were 200 other cities that had train tracks leading to their manufacturing processing plants. The most recent secondary exposure may very well be the entire island of Manhattan due to the 9-11. According to many studies, hundreds of tons of blown-in fireproofing used in the Twin Towers contained asbestos. When the Twin Towers collapsed, they produced the world's largest man-made asbestos-containing dust cloud. On 9-11-06, five years after the collapse, I performed a dust study on a very elaborate condominium located at the Ground Zero site. During my full particle identification forensic dust testing of a back fire escape hallway stairwell, the laboratory results came back as the identical twin tower pulverized building materials from five years ago prior on 9-11-01. The laboratory data test results showed that asbestos, silica, glass, cellulose metals, and some carbon types all had the similar 9-11 DNA dust type. Due to all the energy crisis, starting with the architects in 1950, where architects wanted a more efficient building by adding zonolite and vermiculite to the cores of the hollow sections of the masonry block, followed by the 1973 oil crisis and brownouts, the 1979 energy crisis and Iranian revolution, the 1990 spike in oil prices due to the Gulf War, the 2001 California electricity crisis, the 2000 in three oil crises, and finally the most recent 2008 recession, homeowners all over the country continue to install additional attic insulation. Many homes now have hidden vermiculite that may exist under other insulation products. These conditions, coupled with homeowners no longer wanting to move to bigger, poor energy efficient homes, are now utilizing their attics for more house storage. Many of these homeowners have installed pull-down stairs or access panels which now lead to their vermiculite-filled attics. Every time they pull down the stairs, they contaminate their homes with airborne particulate that may contain potential asbestos. It can cost over $10,000 to remove vermiculite by licensed asbestos contractors or consultants. Be aware of low prices since many contractors cut corners and may create larger house dust problems. If you decide to test... Well, how many tests do you take? If you only take a couple bulk tests, what about the other areas in your attic? Some of you think that if the asbestos levels in the test results are below 1%, you're okay. Wrong. There should be zero or no asbestos in the test results. Remember, you only need one of these fibers to cause health problems. It is also possible that the results come back with no asbestos. 
This is a good thing, and you may want to keep these results for the next home buyer. I've had cases where one 1978 home had asbestos and the other 1978 had none. It's like the game Russian roulette. I know some of you are thinking, this must be the next big scare moneymaker. Think about this. 35 million homes that have an average of three people living in the home, and most homes are sold every eight years. That comes out to about 300 million people that may have already been exposed to potential harmful asbestos-containing vermiculite. This is why the lawyers are putting up billboards and doing late-night commercials. These lawyers know about this major fast-moving tsunami that has not hit land yet. This vermiculite problem will affect people forever, unlike smoking cigarettes and radon gas, which are the number one and two lung cancer causers in the U.S. today. You can quit smoking or change to one of these very cool non-tobacco electronic cigarettes that utilizes non-tobacco nicotine and produces non-odor vapor smoke. Or we could install radon mitigation systems or vent our basements to remove radon gas. There are no simple solutions to removing vermiculite asbestos insulation, especially if it's hidden. Now our country has thousands of foreclosed vacant homes ready for the demolition crews and bulldozers. These contractors are going to kill themselves and pollute our streets, especially if the wind is blowing on demolition day. 60 Minutes needs to do this story. Thank you. This is Marco Volk from www.houseinvestigations.com. Please visit my website for great house information. Thank you.